In today's episode, we'll be covering three uncommon but extremely useful ways to clean your photos in Photoshop. My name is Max Bridge, I'm a still life photographer from London. The three techniques we'll be learning today are using dust and scratches, painting directly onto an adjustment layer, and finally using frequency separation. Now frequency separation you might be aware of in portrait retouching, but it's also hugely beneficial for still life photos. Let's head into Photoshop and I'll show you just what I'm talking about. Now we're inside Photoshop, let's just run you through these three techniques quickly. Each one is good in different ways and for different things. As is always the case in Photoshop, there's never one tool that works perfectly for everything. So the first one is dust and scratches. What I want you to do is create a new layer. So Control Alt Shift N if you're on a PC or Command Option Shift N if you're on a Mac. And then hit Control Alt Shift E or Command Option Shift E to create a stamp visible layer. So this is our new layer. You can name it whatever you want, but for the moment we're just going to have filter a noise filter and dust and scratches. Look, there we go. Uh, now with the number here, don't worry about the threshold, we're not going to use that in this case. For the number here, I just want you to take it up until what you see disappears. So you see if I have it at one down there, and then I take this up, you'll see these scratches start to disappear. The heavier ones take a bit longer, and in this instance I'd say probably something around five does the job just fine. So if we then add a mask onto that by hitting the little mask option down here and then hit Control or Command I to invert that mask. Now hit B for the brush tool and then I like to use a relatively low opacity, probably around kind of 60 ish. All right, it's not that low really. Uh, and then in this instance, we're going to use a pretty soft brush and then you can just paint it on wherever there is dust, you paint it on. You see, and this just works perfectly. It's super easy. As you can see, unbelievably easy. The only places it's not gonna work is if you are, this one might be okay, but next to edges. Oh, yeah, there you go, you see. I mean, that would have been okay because we didn't have to go in that far, but you see it just kills the edge. It doesn't differentiate between what is dust and what is the edge of something. If something's really close to the edge of something here, then in some instances you'll be okay, in some you won't. It won't work that well on edges here. You see it destroys those edges. And let's say, da, 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 like these kind of bits, again, it's just kind of kind of cause a bit of a blur. Not gonna work that well. But on big open spaces, well, actually a really small space, but <laughs> on big like pieces of metal, that sort of thing, this technique will work perfectly and it's really quick and really easy. However, if there is any detail on your surface, let's say for instance, this image, it will not work because it can't differentiate between what is the dust and what is detail you actually want to retain. Uh, it's just going to get rid of everything. So I'll show you quickly if you do dust and scratches here. I mean, you can see already it's just going to completely ruin this, but I'll do it just so you can see. And then I paint, I want to get rid of that. And that you see it just blurs everything. Horrible, no point. Okay, so that's our first one, that's dust and scratches. Now the next one we're gonna cover is painting. So we'll go back to the original image here. Now painting, you might say, how can I clean things up by painting and how can I really paint on a surface? That doesn't really make much sense. Um, but let's say here, so in this area here, which dust and scratches would have had difficulty with, and which you, know, you, you could do with the clone stamp tool, but for this, demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna show you by painting. Um, so what you do, create a new layer, create two new layers, and on the top one, I want you to hit shift and backspace. And I wanna fill that layer with 50% gray. So we do that, and then we change the blend mode to soft light, and by holding alt or option, we clip that to the layer below. Okay, and now, just so that we can see what we're doing, I wanna paint just a little random bit so that we can get the noise level correct. But there we go. We have a little paint patch just there, but as you can see, our image has some noise in it, whereas our painted little area does not, so it doesn't look real. But all you have to do is go onto our clipped layer and go to filter, noise, and add noise. Now this image, you know, it was shot, I believe, ISO 50. Um, there's barely any noise in it. 
Um, so you don't want to go too far. Uh, you want to match whatever your image is. I'd say in this instance, probably around 0.85 matches the size of the noise. And then what we can do is then blur that. So if you go filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, you can take it to a level. So you go too far, it just gets rid of it. I'd probably say around 0.3 works. And then I'd probably lower the opacity to something like 70%. So now if we just get rid of that, now we can paint wherever we want, so long as it's a surface with no texture on it. You're not going to be able to paint on, say, for instance, the edge of this watch, this brushed metal edge. If I try to paint here, uh, I mean, I guess you could if you went in really, really close and then painted in a very, very precise way, but that's not what we're trying to do here. What we want to do is speed up your editing because nobody, this is the most boring part of still life photography, spending an hour or two hours cleaning your products while it's completely necessary and is a really obvious sign between a professional and an amateur, it's not fun. So you, you don't want to be doing it for a long time. If I try and paint here, it's, you know, it's not going to look very good. It's just nasty. No point. So get rid of that. But if you're up on an area like this, which doesn't have any texture, then you can easily. If you wanted to, you could paint this whole area. Um, so let's just do that. I'll grab a sample, a color. So you hit Alt or Option to sample a color. And then I use always use a relatively low photo, something like 10. If you hit Shift and then a number, you see this up here changes. You can change it to a number that you want. So I hit Shift and 10 to give me a flow of 10. And then I sample and just start painting. And you see how the dust is just disappearing. Now this would work with dust and scratches. So there's no real need for me to do it with paint, but I'm just giving you a little demonstration. Now what wouldn't have worked with dust and scratches is this area over here. That would have just blurred the whole thing. So if we wanted to make this perfect, I'd lower my opacity even further, hit Shift and 0, 5 to give me a 5% opacity, and then just sample and start to paint here. And now you might say, oh, Max, you're going over the edges. It doesn't look very good. Why are you doing it like that? Well, I will show you in a second. You can neaten up the edges by sampling at the edge here if you wanted. Or if I was to go really wrong and then do something like that, you could add a layer mask. So you add a mask, hit B for the brush tool, and then X to invert this down here so we're painting with black. Turn our opacity up, and I'll probably turn my hardness up a little bit as well. And then I can just paint that away. So you add a mask, and if you make any mistakes, you can easily remove that. So again, you know, that's not perfect, but it's a very quick change, which makes this area much, much cleaner. Now, painting gets me out of loads of trouble. There's not that many examples in this particular image, but some areas... The conventional tools, so I'm talking the clone stamp tool, the healing brush tool, they don't work, neither does dust and scratches, neither does the next technique I'm going to show you, and painting is the only thing that works. So it's a really, really useful technique, but just make sure you get this noise level correct. If you have it correct, then you can paint anywhere and you won't be able to tell. Uh, it'll be a bit harder here because this is a really subtle gradient, but if I paint here, Mm -mm. You see it's very obvious because of the gradient, but you can't tell. You can't tell that this uh, shouldn't be there in terms of its noise. If I zoom in, it just kind of looks like a, a smudge on the surface, but you can see the noise levels are about correct. So long as you have that right, it will be realistic in your images. Okay, so the next technique I'm going to show you is my favorite by far. I absolutely love doing this. Um, it's called frequency separation. I'm sure you're aware of it in terms of portraits, but for still life, it's also great. Um, I'll just quickly show you something else actually as well. So I imagine you're aware of the clone stamp tool and the healing brush. I'm not going to go through them now because that's not what this video is about, but just very quickly, the spot healing brush, that's kind of like a... Uh, paint it and walk away kind of thing. You see, you can just paint anywhere, paint in this little black color, uh, and then Photoshop figures out what you actually want to replace with that. It's come along leaps and bounds in recent years. And as you can see, it's really, really easy with how it paints. 
uh, and it works perfectly most of the time. It wouldn't work on, let's say, this area here on an edge. I'd be quite surprised if it got that. Ah, see, it didn't do a bad job. You can see it's kind of, it's not done perfectly well with that there. It's got a bit of a kink in it, but that's how powerful this tool has become. It used to be terrible and now it is a lot, lot better. Uh, then moving on from that, you have the healing brush. This is kind of like a, a mix almost between the clone stamp and the healing brush because you can sample an area. So you can sample an area and then it starts to paint. You see, you can do that. Now, the reason I'm showing you this, see, it doesn't like edges. You see that if I sample here and paint there? Too close to that edge, it starts to starts to get it. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is because the technique I'm about to show you is almost like taking the best qualities of the clone stamp and the best qualities of the healing brush and using them to clean. So what I do is I use frequency separation. I have actions set up here. I'm not going to take you through how to set up frequency separation because that, to be honest, there's tons of videos on it. It's boring. I always forget it. It's image, apply image, type in a bunch of numbers and it doesn't matter because I just create actions and I'm gonna give you those actions anyway. So there's a different action for 16-bit or 8-bit. The 8-bit has 8-bit next to it and the frequency separation for 16-bit has nothing next to it. So if we click the 8-bit, because that's what I'm currently working on, it has little stops to show you what to do as you're going along. Um, as you can see here, uh, it starts you on your radius. So what I advise is if you take it down to zero, um, you can see that nothing is really being applied. As you move up the radius, you'll start to see those little flecks of dust disappear. Let me just zoom in over here a little bit so you can see a bit better. As you take it up, you'll start to see the flecks of dust disappear. Now this is a bit of a balancing act. Um, you'll have to figure out what's the correct kind of level to use for each of your photos. Um, but you don't want to go too high because then you can see colors start to merge here and you'd have trouble doing that area. Um, so it's not quite like portraits where you might be using a higher number. I tend to use a slightly lower number. So in this instance, say we use like a radius of nine. I click that. There we go. It runs you through everything, all those boring steps that I always forget. And then it leaves you a little note at the end, which just reminds you of what you have to do. Some of this is more designed towards portrait retouching. You don't necessarily have to use a hard edge. That's up to you. Um, but yeah, it's there anyway, in case you forget stuff. So on our top layer, on the higher layer, which is pretty much the only one we're going to be using for cleaning, uh, we take a clone stamp. We get the clone stamp tool set to current layer, not current and below, which is the standard one on current layer. And then all we do is just like the healing brush, we sample an area and we paint. And it doesn't matter whether we sample a bright area and paint in a dark area or a dark area and paint in a light area. All it's doing is it's taking the texture. So with in this instance, a piece of smooth metal, there is no texture. So I can highlight in the bright, I can select the bright area and paint, except for getting an edge, I can select the bright area and paint in a dark area. And it doesn't matter because there's no texture there. So you see, it's absolutely perfect. And now you might be thinking, well, Max, yeah, that's fine, but so was using the healing brush, so why would I do this? Fair point. Let me show you exactly why you do this. So on this image, let's run the same action again. Da -da -da. And let's select, I should really be zoomed in for this, but <laughs> okay, let's zoom in. Mm -mm, there we go. So... Go to nothing. There we go. This one's even more uh, precise because I don't want to get rid of a lot of the texture. I want to retain a lot of this detail in the background. I'll show you what that is. I only want to be around four or five pixels. There we go. Runs through it. Has a little guide. Perfect. So the background of this image is this wooden table. And I really wanted to see that wooden table as the highlights behind this bottle. I didn't want it to be some kind of fake highlight where you just have a piece of paper behind it and then you can't really see the table. So here we go. Now, if I paint on this layer, if I use the clone stamp tool rather on current layer and I select, let's say I select this light bit here and I paint over this dark area of wood. You see how it's not actually taking away the dark part of that wood. That's still there. 
You know, I can be really lazy with it. That's what I love about this technique. I hate cleaning and I love the fact that I can be very lazy. <laughs> you see here the texture is all mostly the same, but what I don't want is I really don't want those tones to be affected because I want it to still look like the table behind it. So you see, I'm being really lazy here. I'm sampling an area up here, which I wouldn't usually do. And then I paint all over here and that dark tone is not really being affected. It is a little bit, but no way near as much as if I was to use the clone stamp tool, obviously not the clone stamp tool, <laughs> or the healing brush tool. So you see how lazy I can be? This is the great thing about this. You can be so, so lazy. You know, ideally you don't wanna be. <laughs> I would still, if I was actually doing this for real, I would be very careful with where I'm picking like I am now. Um, but you don't have to be, which is the great thing. Cause if you make a mistake and you know, I, I move really quickly when I'm, cleaning something when I'm editing. I don't want to be sat there for hours and hours and hours. So I move very, very quickly around and make all of my edits very quickly. And anything that can help me do that in a smoother, more efficient, more attractive way, I love. And that's what this does. So let's just show you that. Toggle that on and off for a second. You see, it barely affected the tones underneath. Now, let me show you the difference. If I create a new layer, Control Alt Shift N, Command Option Shift N on a Mac, and I try the healing brush. Let me show you that one. So we get the healing brush and we sample here and I try and paint there. You see, it takes away that color. If we do the same thing, you know, I'm, I'm just as lazy. It completely takes away the dark color behind it. You have to be so much more precise you have to actually sample the dark. If you don't want to lose that dark color, you have to sample it. You have to tell Photoshop, this is what I want you to sample. I don't want you to sample everything else. But if you are if you select the wrong part, if I select this highlight here and paint over there, it paints the highlight over there. Frequency separation does not do that. And that is what is really, really great about it. The ability to be lazy, which is exactly what I love. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this episode useful and that you can implement some of what you've learned in your future edits. If you've got any questions, chuck them in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. All right, I'll see you in the next video.